Hello ePeople. If you've ever had to install Elasticsearch on multiple hosts, deploy new configuration changes to an entire cluster, or perform rolling restarts, you may be wondering if and how you could automate those processes. Well, yes, you should use automation. Yes, you can use automation. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to how you can use automation using Ansible. So let's go. Installing and configuring Elasticsearch on a single node is trivial. As you add more nodes to your cluster, however, rolling out installations, upgrades, and configuration changes isn't something you want to do by hand. Manual processes like that are error-prone and very time-consuming. Automating these processes using Ansible allows you to define the process in code, rehearse and test it in a non-production environment, and version control the source files. Elastic themselves help us out with this. They have an Ansible role to perform the installation and configure the host to pass the bootstrap checks. This video isn't a full Ansible tutorial, but there are plenty of good introduction level resources on YouTube. There's nothing too fancy in this video, and you don't need to know much Ansible to follow along. If you've never used it before, this could be the excuse you've been looking for to learn it. I'm using AWS for this, but your hosts could be anywhere, as long as you can reach them with SSH. I want to create a cluster, starting with a single node. The host is running, but it's completely fresh and doesn't have Elasticsearch installed yet. I'm going to be running Ansible on another EC2 instance inside AWS. This is called the Ansible control node. In my case, it's the Bastion host I'm using to connect to the node. Now, this isn't a good way to do this in production. Ansible should really run on its own host, but this will work fine for this tutorial. First things first. Let's install Ansible. You'd normally do this with a regular package manager, but there's a different utility to install it on an AWS instance. With Ansible installed, I'll use the Ansible Galaxy command to install Elastic's Elasticsearch Ansible role. Say that five times quickly. The Ansible inventory file contains a single host in a group called nodes. You can make AWS inventory management easier by using the EC2 inventory source with Ansible but I'm going to keep things as portable as possible by using the basic inventory file. The playbook simply applies the elastic.elasticsearch role to all hosts in the nodes group, which will be our single host for now. I've not given it any configuration to use, so the node will be installed with the default config. To run the playbook, I'll run Ansible playbook and point it to my inventory file. The play will run, do the setup work required for Elasticsearch to install correctly, run the installation, start Elasticsearch, and make sure it comes up okay. This step will take some time. I've sped this up a lot. Let's have a quick look at the node. SSH onto it and check the service is installed and running. Have a quick peek at the config. Oops, don't forget to sudo. The config is almost as standard. The only things that are different are that the node name has been explicitly set to the host name I used in the inventory file, the cluster name is also explicitly set to the default of Elasticsearch, and there's an extra setting at the bottom, action.autocreateIndex. A value of true for this dynamic setting will allow Elasticsearch to automatically create an index when we try adding data to an index that doesn't already exist. Testing the REST interface locally works great, but exiting from the node and trying from the Bastion host doesn't work because the REST interface is bound to a loopback address by default. Let's fix that so the node will accept connections from the network. I've got a copy of the original playbook here, but I've updated it to provide the node with some more configuration. I've changed the cluster name to George and set the REST interface to accept connections from everywhere by changing http.host to 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. I'll run this new playbook with the same inventory file. Ansible and the Elasticsearch role will update the configuration on the node and restart Elasticsearch. I can then find the same curl command I used before and try it again. Success! Variables can be assigned to hosts and groups in the inventory file. So I've updated the file and created a new playbook to show how this is done. 
I've given the host a variable to use for the node name and set a variable for a different cluster name against the group, so all hosts in that group can use the variable. This is a copy of the last playbook, but I'm using the variables from the inventory file to set the node and cluster names. Running the new playbook will, again, copy the new configuration to the node and restart Elasticsearch. Once that's complete, I'll validate that the settings have been updated by hitting the node's rest endpoint. Marvelous! This wouldn't be complete unless we added another node to the cluster, so let's do that now. A quick note here, a two node cluster is a terrible idea and shouldn't be done in a cluster you're not going to burn down straight away. Your cluster can end up with a split brain because a master can't always be elected. Don't do this if you're going to use your cluster for anything useful. I've started another instance and I'll quickly show the host doesn't have Elasticsearch installed and the cluster has only a single node right now. I've updated the inventory on the bastion to add the new host, given it a node name of node 02, and also added some important settings in the group section. The new node will need to know about our existing node in order to join the cluster, so we provide it a list of seed hosts and define which nodes are the current master eligible ones. These settings will go into the main Elasticsearch configuration in the playbook, so let's have a look at that. Here's the playbook with our two new settings. Notice that I've also changed http.host to network.host, so the transport interface will also listen to connections from the network instead of only locally. If I don't do this, the transport interface on each of the nodes won't be able to communicate with the other nodes. I can now run this new playbook to install Elasticsearch on the new host, while also pushing the new configuration to the existing node and restarting it. Now I'll check the cat nodes endpoint to validate that our new node has joined the cluster. Success! In a production environment, you won't want to use Ansible to install Elasticsearch on your nodes. You'll ideally have a pre-built image with Elasticsearch already installed and roughly configured, so you only need to tweak a couple of settings that are specific to the new node. A great tool for building images like this is Packer, which is made by HashiCorp. You can even use Ansible as a provisioning tool with Packer to install Elasticsearch for your Packer images. Ansible is still very useful for finalizing provisioning once the image is used to launch a new host, making sure that all nodes have the same configuration, and pushing synonym files and scripts. Now you've seen how Ansible can automate some of the tasks involved in maintaining a cluster, I'd love to hear from you. Have you used Ansible before? Do you use it for Elasticsearch related tasks like this or other DevOps jobs? Is there another tool that you prefer to use? Let me know in the comments. I hope to see you in a future video, but until then, have fun and cheerio.